is so fascinating. I help you? Wait, what? But what about the bird? Yes, the bird. I found it lying on the floor with a broken wing the morning she left. You broke the skewer! I assure you it was him. Why <laughs> on earth did you have to break the skewer? I can't believe it. I was so sure it was Sylvie. Even worse, I thought she was trying to send me a message. A symbol of hope and all. A tender type of hope. Something stirs in you. Perhaps this is why you broke it. All right. Did she say anything else? About me, you know? Did, did she say anything about me? Really? I, I, should, I should give her a call then. Thanks, I guess. Was there anything else you wanted, or...? We were sort of hoping there would be a gun, an expensive jewel, or at least a sword in it for you, if you deliver the message. Oh well. What thing? Yes, not the whole damn union, thank God. Just the nastiest and loudest faction. They come here in the evenings, dumb, unruly types, think they're big shit. But they're good customers, they place big orders, and always pay on time. We should find out who this Lord Faction is, occupying the booth. Loudness means talkative, and we need info. We don't, we have to wait. They'll show up sooner or later. Men get hungry, even striking men. If not today, then they'll be here tomorrow. There are these things called days. You sleep between them. He's saying they'll come after you've slept. Just make him clear you've got that. What are you, a cook now? That's none of your business. He wasn't pan-fried, he was lynched. What could the kitchen possibly have to do with... Fine, okay. The kitchen is closed until 1pm because the cook is working. You can snoop around after that, if you must. What? By the way, you should come back to this thing-based questionnaire if you see anything interesting in the whirling later. standard royalist theme, used on everything from pinball cabinets to full flavor cigarettes, clinging to a picture book version of the past century, waiting for the king to come back and cast out all the profiteers and homosexuals. Basically, imagine a yellow plastic crown with a liquor brand emblazoned on it. The contemporary period stands still. The fated carousel of progress that doomed the royalists is itself winding down. Our time is decelerating into what no one knows. Welcome to Ivashol. 
Don't you welcome to Revachol me? My grandfather came here from a 3,000 year old racist isolationist culture, while your ancestors came to this island a mere 300 years ago. Every school of thought and government has failed in this city, but I love it nonetheless. It belongs to me as much as it belongs to you. It's men like you who keep Revachol divided, making it that much harder for everyone to climb out of this post-war limbo. What he means is, fixation on the Revacholian nation makes it harder for Revachol to actually attain self-determination. Welcome to Frit. Feel free to look around or something. Everything is out on the shelves. What's that magazine she's reading? You mean this? This is Pop Stars. It's got, like, famous people in it. It's not for sale. Looks like it also has something called Police de la Mode, featured on page 34. This speaks to you. Um, it's where they rate different outfits famous people wear. It's kind of funny. They're kind of mean. It's about who's the most stylish. Benita. She's a model. Usually it's a model. Or a singer-songwriter. Or a model. <laughs> We are not the fashion police. We're the real police. Um, okay. I'm not- She looks up from her magazine, eyes filled with tired ennui. Yes, what we have is there, in the medicine cabinet. Go take a look yourself. Um, I don't really know anything. I mean, I know it's there, but I haven't seen it, so... Um... I don't know. No need to worry. It's just standard procedure for us to ask around. If you hear anything, let us know, okay? Okay. Not really. Um, no. I didn't know him at all. Uh-huh. Reality. You mean, what reality? She is like a student unexpectedly called upon by a teacher. Can she answer the classroom question? I don't really know anything. I mean, I'm 15. Yeah, that's why I'm working my ass off in Frit. So I guess, like, that's economic. I don't know. What about it? Cool. The tear machine stands in the corner. A sign says, one bottle equals ten cents. Hmm? Oh, that's the tear machine. It's a machine for tear. You know, you find tear outside, like bottles or... You need a bag, I guess. We used to have some, but we <laughs> gave them all out, so... Feel free to use it if you find... Where is the medicine cabinet then? Is that it? You see several packaged raincoats fill a low shelf beneath a display of croissants and juice bottles. The raincoats are transparent, except for the big Fritta slogan on the back. The packages are small, discreet, sloppily stacked, making them easier to take unnoticed. 
No need to worry about knocking over a display. Okay, where is the cabinet of medicine now? A colorful display of cigarettes and alcohol bottles line the shop wall. The bottles wink at you in the light. The smokes, too, glitter in their wrapping. It's like looking into a kind of heaven. Your knees are weak. There, in that dark green glass, all in vain. The great flowing river of warmth. Wine, alcohol. Beer, alcohol. Love, alcohol. The beauty, the truth, the poetry of it all. I'm obliged to inform you that both alcohol and cigarettes damage your health, but I guess you already know that. A small cabinet on the wall is filled with various medicine bottles, nasal sprays and blister packs. They all bear the Saint Baptiste Pharmaceutics logo. Their logo is the bloodless rose, pure white, untouched by harm. Um, just ask me if you need anything from Saint Batiste. We don't stock prescription meds, but we do have Nosafed, Duramine, Magnesium and Hypnogamma. Um, I don't know. Let's see. Nosafed is a nasal spray, Duramine is a really good painkiller. Magnesium is a dietary supplement. Hypnogamma is... I don't really know what Hypnogamma is. I guess it makes you feel less shit. It's recommended to use after lots of partying, studying or exercising. Uh-huh. Try examining this body again. Entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. Ha ha ha! Again, the corpse laughs at you, pus dripping from its mouth. You will never be able to hold it in. It's always too much. Every time it happens, it gets worse and worse. There's nothing more to throw up now. All that's left is crying and convulsing dryly at the same time. The lieutenant is clearly at a loss. Officer, you just need to be stronger. Learn to keep it in long enough for us to work. There's nothing else to do. You can open this white check again by going to your character sheet and spending a skill point to upgrade, upgrade endurance. your endurance. Gain new skill points by exploring and completing side tasks. Maybe it's okay if you don't make it today. The dead man isn't going anywhere. And there's always other things to do. Volumetric shit compressor. Bizarre scientific news from Rivershall West today, where a police officer's shit has been observed <laughs> at a pressure of around 495 gigadecimals. These metallic hydrogen levels of shit togetherness were thought to exist only at the center of collapsing stars, not law officials. It remains to be seen how long the shit's singularity lasts.
There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is it. As you breathe in, there the odor go. comes over you. It's a spell of the mind telling you to run and your stomach to wring itself empty. With your hands at your sides and your eyes squinting, you stand in it. It's a puzzle. What's hanging in front of you is a puzzle of decaying flesh, tattoos, and tendons. They do after seven days, yes. We are deep in decomposition here. The man before you is naked, but for a pair of underpants and enamel boots. His skin is greenish, marbled with decaying veins, and blotched by lividity. A fading web of tattoos covers his chest and shoulders. The cargo belt used to fasten him to the branch above appears industrial in strength. The material appears to be ceramic. Its clean white stands in stark contrast to the decaying flesh above the knee. The man wore thick polymer socks, probably for padding. A fine array of interlocking plates covers them. Delicate and fragile, they feel alien to the world around you out of place somehow. These are clearly not boots. They're armor, possibly part of a larger set. Indeed. Technically speaking, these are sabatons, not boots. Oh, the lieutenant uses a memo technique, A6. That's not just any notebook. It's a classic. It's clearly some manner of super armor, or future armor. Super future armor? I'm useless. Ceramic plate. Zirconium dioxide, most likely. This is where the make would be. Under the hill. Fairweather. Fairweather model T500VE. I'm guessing that's vitreous enamel. This is advanced stuff. The locals probably scavenged it. It would be odd if he had more on after seven days. We should keep a look up for these pieces. The armor could yield information. Maybe he'll know something. The sabatons dangle off the man's decaying form. Ageless and synthetic. It is. It's expensive. That noise. We've requested similar material for our tactical units for years now. The constabularies deemed it too costly. In that time, we've lost six men to semi-automatics. For a full set, about four years of wages. For the northwest region of Revachol, an officer's average yearly income is 5,500 real, unadjusted for rank. As a wage, it's regrettably small, but for a piece of hardware, yes, that's a lot. That's for us to find out. Mr. Gart implied he was security personnel for the Harbour Company. This confirms my own assumptions. Just something I scraped together from my station. An area report from Martinez. I'm sure you did the same. I agree. This equipment is way beyond what a guard can afford. The stench fills your nostrils. As you push downward, an ominous creaking sound comes from above. Stop! Pig's gonna pull his head off. Brutal! What's wrong with you, asshole? Why is he letting Goku know? I don't know, baby. I don't know why he's such a... Officer, if I may ask, what were you trying to achieve by putting on the deceased foot? The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt, his torso covered in tattoos and extremities blotched pink and blue. 
The hangman's knot is pulled tight by the weight of the corpse below. Yellow, hard-edged polyester. This is a steel-reinforced cargo lashing belt. Big brother of the regular cargo belt. It's used for tying cargo under six rotor airships. Airlifting? I thought it was used on lorries for strapping cargo to them. The local harbor uses six rotors to shuffle containers around. I get the sense they use whatever was on hand without paying much attention to not incriminating themselves. I was afraid it would be. Thin steel wiring, parallel strands. This makes getting him down more problematic than I had assumed. The brief suggested as much, politically motivated by the ongoing strike. Did you not get a briefing? Then you should ask me the first moment we get. A noose is one of those things that's easier to use one way around. That ladder can't carry a grown man. I didn't see any splintering either, did you? I think they lassoed the branch, then pulled on the belt to close the buckle. Could be. The shape of the branch supports the theory. The cadaver hangs from the cargo belt, limbs limp and torso covered in tattoos. An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso, from the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time they intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. A map of the stars. I do see some similarity to astronomical charts. Great century Messinian, maybe. But this seems more particular. Customized somehow. As if someone left out most of the night sky, filtering it through personal choice. The principle of this filter remains unknown to you. The thought dissipates, and you feel as though you were only half right. So am I. He wears a wide leather belt around his waist and a gun holster under his arm. He takes a thin piece of milled aluminium from his coat pocket and pulls it open. Sounds like a sword being unsheathed. A small lens appears. Some sort of camera. Shit, Kuno! What the fuck is that? An instant color camera. I have only two ampoules, so nobody move. I don't want to waste one. A sound, a shrill flash, followed by the breaking of a small ampoule of glass. You see streams of color pour onto the thick, glossy piece of paper, rolling out. In case we need it. It contains insight to the victim's person. By his build, I'd say this was a man of physical violence. The story he wanted his body to tell was important to him. It is his letter. To us. Someone should decipher it. We need to show it around. Sure. Just don't lose it. The glossy-eyed corpse looks by. His mouth mute and his skin as colorful as the chemical rainbow on the photo paper teeming with opportunistic organisms. You've acquired an interactable item. Investigate this item further by going to the interact tab in your inventory. Item. His eyes are milky white and blind to the world, protruding comically from their sockets. There is no one home, just subaquatic terrors there. Dark brown hair grows on his head. His face is ready to explode from the organic processes inside. The death's head grin has passed. What remains is an unrecognizable mess. I'm gone. I'm a 
joke. Look at me. A killer. A motherfucker. And a killer. Go ahead, Hoppa. Into the wild pale yonder. In the past. Way out in the west. What do you mean? It's the power of your... Imagination. Go ahead. Ask me more questions. You fucking love questions. Because you're a cop Rooney. Look at all of them go. Do you want more questions? Coming right up, Copper Rooney Rooney. This is getting up B now. Fuck no. You're no Rooney. Between you and me, your name is probably Harry. You can be anything you want, brother Coppo. did me and brother Coppo. It was love all along. Come back later, Coppo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. If possible, also, see me in your dream. As you narrow your eyes, the monster before you blurs into a violent mess of green and pink. This is a trick. You've done it before. Pink is where the blood settled in the first hours post-mortem. You can use it to see if the corpse has been tampered with. Does his position at the time of death match the discoloration? Only the lower extremities are pink with a dash of blue. His fatted hands, thighs, and his neck just above the noose. The rest of the corpse appears dark green in the cold spring air. I see it. His neck too. The lividity goes right up his chin. We have good, well-pronounced discoloration here. The monster comes back into focus, an explosion of color coursing with dark marbled veins. His stomach appears pregnant with something. Black liquid streams down his thigh and onto his boot. So, what do you think? Agreed. Especially on the neck. The belt acted like a tourniquet, keeping the blood in his head. The hypostasis supports her hanging. There's always a chance. We should check for ligament marks on his neck to see if they're in tune with the belt. We'll have to get him down first. I do. Most of them are post-mortem. Maybe even all of them. The delinquents have made our jobs harder with their little spot. Stop talking in riddles, coin slot. He means he fucked him up good, Kuno. Fucked him up brutal like. A pool of blood and feces has eaten into the frozen mud below the man's feet. Purge liquid is dripping into it, drop by drop. The victim appears to have contained no more than half a kilogram of digestion the time of death. The fuck he's saying? <sighs> Talking about shit. Did we? I don't feel lucky. I agree. His personality is no longer a part of the world. Totally dead.
That sounds about right, yes. But there is no breath to catch, only the cadaver filling the air and your nostrils. He slowly rotates before you, decomposing. Are you sure we finished the preliminary examination of the cadaver? We might miss some of these things once he's done. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt. Of course. You have questions, don't you? The power of your imagination is at your service. Because you have... Sure, Lobo, I can ask you a question. Why are you doing this? Looking at my face, motionless. Looking into my eyes, standing here. Why are you investigating my murder? <sighs> Something is on its way. Something hidden. It's coming. A miracle from the northwest. And it's almost here. You can feel it in the air, on your hands. The cold spring air smoothing them over. Do I remind you of someone? A child born with Muller's disease, Harlequinism, grown up miraculously. Oh. You sure I got out of that one? Coppellini. Come back later, Corpo. Hmm. The steel reinforced belt presents a unique challenge. I brought chain cutters, but I don't see a good angle of approach to the belt. He doesn't actually think the challenge is unique. He thinks it's frustrating, annoying, and harder than he thought. <laughs> the cadaver is a good 1.2 meters up. Neither one of us can reach the belt without assistance. And even if we do, there's the question of cutting the airship strength material. I was really hoping we wouldn't. The Union appeared to be suspect in this case. It seemed like a dangerous route to go down. I would really prefer if there was another way. These people might have an agenda. But what other options? The corpse twists on the belt, like chicken on a skewer. Climb up there and saw the branch? There has to be a less risky way, with less falling down of trees. Someone else? You mean, like, the police? Sadly, yes. The whole RCM is out there right now, doing the exact same thing we are. Are we in a rush to help them? Not with this on our hands. I know it's hard, but I assure you, the others won't come to help us. And we have a growing sanitary concern here. We need to get him down, fast. Okay, they do have the tools and the men. And since it looks like they put him there... <sighs> okay, let's do it in the lousy, dangerous way. To ask the suspects for help with the victim's body? To be indebted to Evrard Claire? Very much, yes. Which is why I would have preferred us to handle this ourselves. Clearly we can't. Suck my dick, bitches! He's a dangerous and corrupt man, and we cannot predict what he will want from us in return. Yeah, don't go being someone else's bitches, your kunos bitches. From the gates, by negotiating or fighting. I'm unenthusiastic about fighting. Or we can try to find some secret third path. It's an ugly door. To the gates, let's negotiate. You see I'm throwing rocks. All right, entertain the Kuno. Show me what you got. What you got there? What you got, huh? Show me what you got. The kid moves his hands like a basketball player dribbling fast. Irregular speech patterns, 
Overconfidence. Could this kid be on drugs? This warrants further investigation into this Kuno. Kuno's Kuno Pig? It's always Kuno, never I. Clearly the kid's using the third person perspective as a shield. Kuno doesn't do that smart shit. Don't throw that book shit at Kuno. Kuno knows you're lying. Trying to get Kuno hooked on the book. Watch out, Kuno! He's trying to fiddle you! He's gonna put his hands on you! Help! Pig's got Kuno! Help! Rape! Help! He's got the Kuno! Help! Everyone can hear. You need to get the hell out of here before. Yeah, get out of here before the Kuno beats the shit out of you. Yeah, that's right. Drag your fat ass out of here, fat boy, before Kuno fucks you. Bye! <laughs> got fucked by the Kuno. We all right. You want to get fucked again? Come back. Yes? No response. He just... He's having trouble processing it. Believing it even. Have you tried concentrating on something other than your personal affairs? Really? You look fine to me. This psychodrama is unbecoming of an officer. Clearly, he prefers to think you're malingering. He cannot fathom that anyone could drink so much as to retroactively erase their entire life. Then you should consider seeking medical attention. You can use the radio in my kinema to call your station's lazarus. Was there anything else you wanted? What do you want to know? Ah, yes. The case brief you missed. Now I remember. Three days ago, the RCM emergencies desk received a report about a security guard who was found hanged in Martinez. An anonymous caller said there was a dead body behind the whirling in Rags hostel cafeteria. The cadaver had been there for four days. No one had come to investigate. During that time, the victim had been stripped of his belongings. The caller did not identify him, but used the word lynching. There is an ongoing labor dispute between the local dock workers and the logistics company Wild Pines. I was told we should approach the death as part of this dispute. They didn't identify themselves in any way. The tone was muffled using a device of some sort. The desk could identify neither the caller's age nor sex. There is a strong prejudice against involving the RCM in what's seen as union matters. The dock workers' union is the de facto police in Martinez. Now it appears they've started executing too. We cannot allow that. That's us, the Revachol Citizens Militia. We're the police in this city. The RCM, or the Revachol Citizen Militia, is the police force you and him are part of. A self-organized peace corps of the occupied city of Revachol. The RCM operates within a legal twilight, yet its authority is rarely questioned. It's super useful to know this. 
That's right. No, it's not a particularly mysterious case. The deceased is a security guard for a corporation involved in a labor dispute. It doesn't take a DeLorean polymath to put the pieces together. I just don't see the case getting more mysterious than that. There was some interest in this case at my station, but not for the reasons you have in mind. You seem to wish there was a... Excellent. Was there anything else? Good. Me? I don't see how my life is pertinent to the investigation. Hmm, that's a fair point. All right, for the good of the investigation, what do you want to know? That's correct. You feel a slight urge to put the lieutenant down for this, but you can't quite muster enough testosterone. I guess you don't need glasses, then. That's because I'm half Seolite, or quarter. My father's father was from Seoul. So was my grandmother, but from my mother's side. It's not an interesting topic. It's a part of the world, officer. A geopolitical entity and a geographic division. I told you it wouldn't be interesting. Seoul is a protectionist, isolationist, pan isolary state west of the Insulindian Isola. Actually, it's quite interesting. Some would even say mysterious. You're barking at the wrong tree. I don't speak a word of Seolite. I've never met either one of my grandparents, and I've never been to Seoul. I'm a regular of Evachelier. A point of pride to him. Interesting. No. <laughs> The lieutenant nods. What do you mean? I have no idea what you're talking about. The lieutenant's conceptualization skills must be rather rudimentary. I can't say that it does, no. When I need to think, I just use my notebook. The lieutenant produces his familiar Nemo Technique A6 and idly thumbs through a few pages. We all have our different mediums. His is written. I love the artwork on these. Good. Let's change the subject. But it's after one. We can go investigate the kitchen now. I need a lot more coin. Thin man is smoking below an exhaust hood, occasionally sipping from his mug. This must be the Whirling's cook. As you step in, he nods toward the table and says something in a completely foreign language. The only words you can make out are Garanzi and Kubek. Okay, it's definitely not his name. Whatever you do, please don't call him Garanzi Kubek. Please. It's not funny. The man puts his cup down and replies something, his left hand drawing arcs in the air. He smiles and bangs his ladle against each of his pots in turn. It's almost like music, especially with the sounds of assorted dishes boiling and simmering on the stove. You see a heavy steel door with a prominent dimple lock. It's painted blue. You do? It's a door in the back of the kitchen. Why do you care where it leads? Hmm. Yes, 
I suppose it's worth seeing if we can... It's hardly a side investigation. You already have a name for it. It's hardly worth the title. Anyway, Gart is the person to ask about this. The cafeteria manager. Can I help you? Another thing. Great. Oh, yes, that door. Sure. There's nothing mysterious about it. It's just a door. No, I don't have a key. I don't know how to get there. And I don't care either. It's not like I've been wondering about it for ten years. It's just the frick warehouse, probably. Or some boring storage space with a bunch of old junk and dust. Junk and dust. He's attempting to maintain an air of indifference. It's absolutely not convincing. Fine, okay, a little. But my job doesn't leave me time for wondering about one locked door in one of the cafeterias I manage. So I haven't opened it. I have cleaned the whole place a hundred times over, though, after the animals. And I haven't found a key, so good luck with that. Yes? Yes, have you got it? Like what? I was really enjoying talking about the money you owe me. All right. As it is, it's nine o'clock. It's been a pretty decent run. Um, it's a weird game, but I'm enjoying it. Uh, but it's been two and a half hours. I think it's time for us to find someone to raid.